well to literally change the direction of the world and reinvigorate this country. The American people are not afraid. They're not afraid to take on any of what are either viewed as problems or opportunities we have. They are not at all reluctant. Imagine if after 9-11, uh, I had been president or whomever had been president had said, after commiserating with the loss that occurred in the country, said, I'm making two announcements today. One I've called a meeting of the world's major powers to meet in Geneva on October the 1st so we can jointly plan the demise of the rise of radical fundamentalism. Who would not have shown up? What country would not have participated? How we could have united the world at a moment of crisis? How about if the president had said at that time, I'm sending an energy bill to the United States Senate and House that will literally free us from the iron grip of the oligarchs of oil for funding these radical elements. It's going to require sacrifice. And I expect it of you. Who in America would have said, no, that's too tough. We can't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have bought into the notion here, politically, that this is a fundamentally divided country. It is not a divided country. Politically, it's divided to people or not. A woman raising two, two children here in Boston, Massachusetts, has no different aspiration than a woman made raising two children in Selma, Alabama, or Bio Lafourche, Louisiana. Every American understands we need a rational health care plan. We need a better education system. We need a different foreign policy. And my goal as the Democratic nominee will be to unite this country, not divide it. I do not believe, I do not believe a Democratic candidate is incapable of winning 15 of those red states. There is no reason why we cannot be competitive everywhere. And so my goal, my goal in running for President of the United States is to fundamentally change our foreign policy and unite this country. And I do not think that represents an overly ambitious appetite. I think that's fully within our power and our capability of doing it. So folks, the, uh, the endorsement of these men behind me today, the endorsement of their colleagues, the majority leader in Iowa and the number of state representatives and senators, the, the endorsement of the, of the state legislature state of South Carolina and New Hampshire. This is the basis upon which this campaign is going to win. These gentlemen know how to organize. Politics is, as your famous speaker, Tip O'Neill said, it is local. They understand local politics. And I am really, really, really anxious to get to work with them, particularly in the neighboring state of New Hampshire, which is just across the street, figuratively speaking. I have one thing, though, that I regret. I regret that uh, a man who Bobby White introduced me to some years ago, who became genuinely a good, good, good friend, Kevin Fitzgerald, is not here today. Because he was the first one in this state to come to me and say, Ron, I want to be with you and I'll help. Bobby, thank you for that introduction. And to Trisha and his whole family, I extend my regrets. And I know he was a close and dear friend of every one of these gentlemen behind me. That is the only regret I have today. But I want to tell you, the same spirit that kept Kevin going, no matter what adversity he met, politically or physically, is the same spirit I hope we infuse into this campaign. I truly believe we are going to win this campaign. This is not a fool's errand. I'm not in it for the exercise. I'm in it to change this country, which is the power of the next president to be able to do that. I thank my colleagues for the endorsement. I thank you all for being happy to be here.